Good evening, uh, February 11th, 2021. This is a joint meeting between the Milford Planning Board and the Milford Board of Adjustment. Um, I don't have the whole preamble. So um, in light of the COVID-19, uh, social distancing advice made by the governor and CDC, the town of Milford, following the governor's declaration of an emergency and uh, be, that being noted by the planning board chair is providing a meeting participation via telephone conference for your safety. If you would like to participate in the telephone conference, please call the following number from home. 1-646-558-8656 and enter the meeting ID 831-3593. Three three one five, and the password five five eight one four six, or you may log in via the Zoom app, which is www.zoom.com, uh, using the meeting ID and password above. You may follow along using a digital copy from our website, <clears throat> which is www.milford.nh.gov forward slash planning dash board, forward slash agenda, forward slash planning dash board, dash 11 FEB 2021. We're also live streaming. Are we really live streaming? Cause last time I said that we weren't. We are, okay. We will also be live streaming the media, uh, the meeting on Granite Town Media, Government Channel 21. And the website for that is gtm.milford.nh.gov forward slash cable cast public site forward slash watch forward slash two question mark channel equals two. I also want to note that uh, with the right to no laws, we're all supposed to vote do, with a roll call vote and people will say their name and their vote. And at this time, we also need to, uh, with the right to know, please announce that you are where you are and are you in the room alone? I don't see everybody. So I'll start, uh, I see a, Actually, I'll do my, I'll do the planning board, Jason, and you do you do your people. Sound good? Good. All right, uh, Peter ba Basilier. I'm here. This is Peter Basilier, and I'm alone in the room. Paul Amato. Uh, Paul Amato, and I'm alone in the room. Janet Langdell. Janet Langdell, and I'm alone in the room. Tim Vine, Tim Finan, planning board uh, vice chair. Uh, Tim Finan, I am in the room by myself. Okay. Uh, I also there's also uh, Lincoln Daly from the planning office, Darlene Buffard, um, and our new uh, town planner, um, Jason Cleghorn. Is uh, I don't see Susan. Is Susan here? Susan Robinson? No. Don't okay. All right, Jason. All right, uh, good evening. My name is Jason Floyd. I am the chair of the zoning board. I am at home and I am alone in this room. Uh, tonight we have Karen Legro. I'm Karen Legro and I'm here in the room alone. And uh, Michael Thornton. Mike Thornton, I'm at home. My wife, a fellow citizen of Milford, is in an adjacent room. And our vice chair, Rob Costantino. Hi, I'm Rob Costantino, and Chris Costantino is also in the room at this moment. All right, uh, Chair, Chairman Knott, back to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, our first order of uh, business will be a public meeting. Uh, this is for Housing Initiatives of New England Corporation, which is the applicant and owner. This is tax map 26. Lot 169, 54 School Street. This is a discussion for a major site plan to utilize slash reuse the existing historic Milford Cabinet Building and construct an 18 unit multifamily 
affordable senior housing development and associated site plans. Do I have, uh, may I have a uh, motion to accept the application? We're, Doug, Doug, we're just doing a discussion tonight. Yeah. Oh, oh duh. thank you. Okay. I was going to go through that. What? Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, all right. So, um, well, if it's just a discussion tonight, then what'd you say, Jason? You're going to uh, present it? Uh, I was going to kind of set the stage. Uh, good evening, board members. Uh, uh, Chairman Knott set the stage for what the application is. Uh, the applicant's team is here tonight to share with you their plans for 54 School Street. Um, I'm sure that some of you all look through, flip through the conceptual plans. I, I, I know that you'll notice that there are aspects about the plans that, you know, potentially may not meet, you know, certain requirements of the zoning ordinance. Uh, but tonight is really kind of the initial conceptual discussion of the project in this joint session. So, uh, you know, no formal, we're not looking for any formal action, any uh, really votes to be taken. It's just a good opportunity for them to sort of explain their uh, project to both the boards and, and joint session. And for us as staff to, uh, you know, hear your feedbacks, uh, hear their presentation and go from mm -hmm. there. Chairman Knott did a good job of, of kind of setting the stage um, just one, one thing to bear in mind, I, I will add that the zoning of the property is commercial and it's in the oval overlay district and the oval over to, uh, excuse me, commercial zoning allows multifamily to follow the residential B, um, uh, zoning characteristics. So multifamily would be allowed there. May, like I said, there may be aspects that they might need a variance or a special exception for. Some of that will shake out as we kind of move along in this process. So with that, Chairman Nod, I'll turn it back over to you and you can recognize the applicants if you so choose. Yes, I would like to, uh, who's, who's here to um, present? Hey, Doug. Hey, Doug. 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 Um, Doug. This is, yeah. Just before you start, sorry about that, Cynthia. No, Susan no Robinson has entered the room. You might want to recognize her. Oh, I didn't know that. Thank you. Yeah, I think three of us were going to tell you that at the same time. <laughs> Hi, Susan. You're muted. So, okay, Susan. So I'm um, glad you made it. And uh, but please identify you're a planning board member and are you alone in the room? You're muted. Can't hear you. Well, it doesn't show you're muted, but your lips are moving and there's nothing coming. Yeah, your headset's probably muted, Susan. Oh, uh, okay. Also, I don't know how to fix it. Yeah, you Susan, yeah, you're here. <laughs> okay, all right, sorry about that. So um, this is, good evening. I'm Susan Robinson of the Milford Planning Board. Um, I'm present, I'm alone in my room, but for my cat, I'm so sorry. <laughs> here. As long as it's not your Welcome, lawyer. Welcome, Susan. <laughs> all right, thank you, Janet, Pete. Uh, all right, so the applicants. Um, so who's going to present from Housing Initiatives of New England? So Doug, this is, uh, my name is Cynthia Taylor and I'm the president of Housing Initiatives. And I'm here tonight <laughs> with, uh, with, with a very strong design team and, uh, and my associate uh, Brad Turner is also on here and he'll be working with me closely on this project. So we have, um, we have Jonathan Halley from, uh, from Warren Street Architects and uh, his associate, Carolyn Corvo. And then we have uh, our Jeff Cavan from TF Moran, who you may be very familiar with in Milford. Um, Jeff worked with us on the mill across the street. Uh, and I think everybody in the community is pretty familiar with us because we've been in town um, with senior housing for the last uh, 35 years. So um, I bought this building uh, from the Milford cabinet folks uh, before they um, sold to an out-of-state uh, organization and then decided to downsize and move over to the Oval. Um, but we this is one of, I think, Milford's most beautiful buildings. It was the first high school in the community and it's had many uses um, besides the high school. 
I'd like to recognize Sarah Brown because she's got the mill in the background right behind yeah, her. Yeah, that's thank great, you. Sarah. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> that's perfect. Um, but it, anyway, uh, we we're we've been we've owned this building now for almost eight years, and um, we've had it rented to the Milford Cabinet, and then they moved out, and then. We actually donated a lot of the beautiful printing materials that were in there to um, uh, to a museum in Massachusetts that just does printing. It's called the Printing Museum in Massachusetts. And then we saved some of the most uh, ni some of the nicest pieces we gave to the Milford Historical Society. And so I think uh, everybody was a winner in. Uh, utilizing the historic uh, pieces that came out of that. We had some beautiful etchings and just gorgeous printing materials that, that were, were there in the building. And, the, and we've saved enough to do uh, a special exhibit when once the building is renovated. So I think um, one of the most important things here is that uh, our business is senior housing. Um, we're a nonprofit organization and we operate all over the state of New Hampshire. Um, Milford is one of my favorite communities, and uh, I had the opportunity last year to, to work with Paul and Lincoln on a parking committee, which I hope we get uh, back together as soon as, uh, as, soon as COVID allows us to. Um, but uh, I think that the highest and best use for this building is really housing. It's, it's not very large. Uh, it needs a lot of uh, historic attention on the outside and intend to develop it as a historic structure. Um, so with that, uh, I'd like to introduce our design team. And I think that basically I'm gonna ask Jonathan Halley to uh, make a presentation. We've got two, well, we've actually looked at three or four concepts. We wanted to share these with you tonight as part of our discussion. We recognize that the zoning was changed since we um, built our addition on the mill, which was, approximately uh, 16 months ago. Uh, and that uh, we're, we will be looking for some uh, density and uh, other restrictions that are now in the ordinance that weren't when we did the, the addition across the street. So with that, I'd like to ask Jonathan to, um, to start with the uh, concepts that we have, uh, I think you have in front of you. And we just had somebody else join the team. Hi, it's Tracy from ZBA. Hi, Tracy. Hello. Uh, well, welcome this evening. Um, you are Tracy Steele. You're a member of the zoning board. Are you home or where are you? And yes. is anybody in the room with you? Um, yes, I am home. Currently, I just got home and uh, my daughter and my niece are in the living room with me. All right, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and a dog. Yes. <laughs> well, good evening, everybody. Um, thank you, Cindy. Um, Lincoln, do you have the concept? Do you want to share those on your screen or do you want me to? Um, uh, I, I, can share, I can share my screen and you can just vision, you know, prompt me to when you want to move or. That would be great. That would be great. So um, we actually have been looking at this property now for a couple of months and we've developed a series of um, possible options. Um, tonight, we're gonna show you two. Um, in fact, these schemes are uh, less, if you will, than in terms of density than what we originally started out with. Um, both schemes um, tonight, we're gonna show you are three stories, uh, three story additions. Um, with a total of 18 one bedroom apartments. Um, and, um, and both schemes have 18 parking spaces um, proposed, although um, concept B will show you 18 on our property. This first scheme that we're showing you is parallel parking or perpendicular parking, if you will, on Bridge Street, um, whether that's would be allowed or not it's it's just a concept and it's a thought and we'd like to get your your comments on that but um the if you, lincoln if you could just scroll up just a little bit you'll see the whole thing Oop, too much 
I'm, I'm struggling because I can't see what you all are seeing. Oh, if you could go back one, no, just let's go there because you're two at a time. So at the bottom of your scheme uh, your screen, you're going to see. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, this is the first concept. We'll call it concept A. Um, and the areas that you see in red are actually uh, portions of the existing building that would be uh, restored and, and retained. Um, there is some baby blue area in the middle that will be a marriage of some old and some new. Um, and then the pochade striped areas with the four on the top are um, would be the new addition. So conceptually with both of these, um, we've been concerned with maintaining the green space on the south side of the parking, on the south side of the parcel, um, simply because it, it presents itself most historically to the building um, and what it was originally. Um, this first scheme um, is a three-story addition to the north, uh, which faces Bridge Street. Um, nine parking spaces to the back, um, which I believe is code compliant. Um, and then nine spaces on Bridge Street um, that we would have to work out in some way with the parking committee and with, with the town. Um, you're gonna, if you jump ahead a little bit. Okay, so this is gonna show you a massing study for that particular addition. Um, if you can imagine, um, you are looking at, um, so the brown portions of the, of the building is historic. Um, you're now looking on the left-hand side um, from the fire station, if you will, uh, across the street. Um, and the photo on the top right is more from the mill across the street, Bridge Street. Um, what we're trying to do here is um, in historical context, if you will, um, present a form of the addition that at least complements and, and, and mimics what the original structure was. Um, we're not saying that it would be um, completed in, a, in the same vernacular, um, but it won't be something that is uh, contemporary or starkly um, different from the original building. Um, it would connect on the first level only. There'd be a stair tower, two sets of stairs within the blue addition and an elevator that would service the three floors and the 12 apartments in the new building. And there would be six apartments in retrofitted into the existing building. Um, we can go on to the next one and then we can come back and I sort of can take questions back and forth. So this second concept that we're looking at um, uh, presents 18 parking spaces off of Bridge Street, um, which are, uh, uh, I believe, code compliant, although the parking is right on the um, property line itself. Um, but those two parking areas would be at varying levels based on the slope of, of Bridge Street. And what we're proposing is to reuse a little more of what is existing. Um, the additions, uh, we believe that uh, the original cabinet building was added on two or three times um, over the years. And the additions on the north side, which is where it says type three, type four um, in the red on the top, um, we would, in this scheme, try to maintain all of the existing structure. So. Um, we would, there would be one apartment on the lower level of the existing, we would take down the loading dock, um, where it says in blue, just to the left of the cursor, um, that would be one apartment at the lowest level. Um, there would be three apartments on the, on the first floor, if you will, and then six apartments on the other side, and then the, the addition is proposed to be off to the back. Um, again, three stories with central space, central circulation space, stairwells and, and elevators, and a series of nine apartments built on the back of the building. Um, it encroaches a little more into the green space that we're trying 
um, to maintain. Um, but it's a balance. If you look at the massings, if you go on to the next sheet, it's a balance of um, uh, acknowledging that this has to go through the State Division of Historic Resources. The building is um, eligible on the National Register. Um, and we're trying to come up with a scheme that is uh, considered the least amount of adverse effect to the historic character of the building, if you will. Um, so if you can imagine the views of the building um, from at least the, the south end of Bridge Street as you turn the corner um, and the views from the fire station onto uh, the existing buildings, the context of the existing building is really maintained as it is as it exists today. Um, and the majority of uh, the new construction being to the rear of the building, uh, right up to the building setback. So this is where we are um, today um, in, our, in our thoughts. Um, we've kind of settled in on both schemes being 18 units. Um, that's really the threshold of a project like this being financially viable. Um, and we're interested in getting having an open conversation both with ZBA and the planning board to get your initial thoughts. Um, we would be required to have a, a density um, variance. Um, I do believe that we meet the height restrictions in the zone. And we also are asking for relief to have one parking space per unit in lieu of zoning requires one and a half spaces. Um, so I think that frames the context of where we are. I think Jeff, if you can think of something else or Cindy, um, you can jump in. Jeff, would you like to add something first? What's that? Is, do you have anything that you'd like to add? No, I just to emphasize to the board. So we're looking for feedback with the two concepts. You know, again, the relief we'll need in this zone, the density is five units per acre. We only have a little over half an acre, so we, it would be allowed 2.8 units. Um, again, to work with and preserve the building and work around it, um, we're asking for 18 units. Uh, and then the other relief is a waiver through the planning board for the parking, um, the unique situation with the parking here with the experience we have across the street we know that we don't need that much parking I think uh, Cindy you have 70 units and roughly 60 spaces uh, across even less, the street yeah it, we have a few less than that um, but we we have adequate uh, parking across the street um, for staff for both buildings both this one and the building across the street, but we are well under uh, one per over there. I will say that I'm looking to create one, one per apartment here um, because the income levels are just slightly, uh, a little bit more than, a little higher, I should say, I'm sorry, a little higher than the income levels for the old mill. So uh, we, we wanna plan for one space per unit. Um, but still in downtown Milford, it's, it, we may not use all that parking because people usually, they like me, being in a community like this uh, when they no longer want to drive. But um, we, we uh, do think that people 62 now are, um, are, are quite active. I think that helps the downtown. I anticipate that we'll have um, a healthy group of people walking the neighborhood, uh, participating in restaurants and shops when, when we can, as soon as we are through this COVID. Um, uh, and I think that the green space on the Middle Street side, A, that was the original playground for the school. So it's kind of nice to keep it as open space. And B, it gets all of the sun. I mean, it's it's a very, very sunny space all day long. And so to create something really nice for our residents, um, I want to keep as much as that, as much green space as, um, as possible. I do think that the other scheme 
the one that's not up on the screen right now, um, preserves more of the existing building, this, this one. Um, and we, we just need to fine tune our programming in, our, in the link and so forth. Um, but either, either of these will work on the site. Um, you, mm -hmm. can also, you can also see in this um, concept, we uh, took the latitude of showing uh, some diagonal parking that's within the town um, property on Middle Street. We think if we even gave up a, a maybe 12 inches or something there and created a sidewalk on our property, that we you might be able to get diagonal parking on both sides of Middle Street. And I don't need to complicate our site plan with this, but since we have we spent the last year looking at parking, I I I couldn't help myself to ask Jeff to at least uh, take a quick look at that to see if it's possible. So um, I, I just wanted to share that information with you. Um, so you, we think that we can contain all of the parking we need on this site. I don't think I need more than one per. And um, I think historically, if you look at uh, any uh, senior complexes in the downtown area, you'll find that not everyone has a car. So I, I, I think it's a very reasonable request to ask for one per as opposed to one and a half per. I do think that uh, the height variance we probably won't need because we want to keep, we want to stay under the basic eve of the existing building so that the, the uh, proportions are correct for the historic um, school. And so I think that's, that should be a non-issue as far as your zoning goes. Um, but I, I, I think if you look at um, what we potentially have here, we, I, I, we could do some very nice landscaping along School Street. Um, um, there's already a ramp out there for handicapped access. Uh, we started renovating and improving the uh, trim on the old masonry building last summer by painting it and, and uh, at least keeping that in uh, good, good maintenance. And um, we know uh, that the masonry on this building is absolutely beautiful. There are, are gorgeous corbels that, uh, are, that are holding the fascia. Um, we've got the bell tower that's existing and we've got a beautiful bell up there, uh, not dissimilar from the bell that you have in your city hall. And we intend to uh, maintain that and uh, keep it in its historic condition. Um, and then, uh, one of the most important things that I believe in for our housing is that we want to create some really nice community space and places for people to gather. Uh, so you'll see that there's community space there on the south side of the building. There's community space uh, in, in the wide link and there'll be a laundry and mail area and card rooms and other things like that. So I think that uh, it should be a, a really nice addition to the downtown and a really nice addition to that whole corner once it's uh, landscaped and, and built out. I, I have a question if we can just jump in. Please do. I'm Go just ahead. talking about parking. Is, is there any opportunity? Did you ever think of, as you know, next door to you was a town lot. If there was some kind of you know agreement and the, the areas were combined, would, would possibly the aggregate if they were, you know, if it was redesigned because the lot, the area was larger, maybe the aggregate would, we could gain some spaces total and then work out some kind of a deal. I looked at that. Um, you know, you've maxed out your parking there. Uh, I think you have uh, 24 spaces there. I don't, and you've um, built right to the street line. So I don't know that we could get any more. Uh, okay. I don't know if we could connect, as you've said, uh, you know, using your aisles. I don't think there's a way to really gain space, but I, I will, I think it's an excellent question, Tim. And we did look at that. Um, and then we started looking at Middle Street. Um, I wish that, I wish it was easier. Uh, as you know, when you, um, resurfaced the city parking lot last year. Um, you ran into ledge and had to uh, hammer out some to get proper depth of your um, base in there. 
Um, and we did test pits today and there's a lot of ledge on this site as well. Um, I, 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 I don't see it as a problem. I don't see the ledge as a problem. I think it's a good base to build on, but um, wanna stay with the, pretty much with the same topography that we have out there if we can. But I, if there was a way, Tim, I'd be, I would be more than willing to work on uh, something that would be advantageous to everybody. Yeah, thank you. Couple well, questions. When we're talking about parking, uh, this is Pete Basilea with the uh, planning board. How many of these spaces are uh, handicap accessible? Uh, we're gonna, we have a specific requirement for that. It'll be 5% uh, uh, of our units. So was there a specific reason that you asked that question? Pete? Well, we have we, we have ordinances around the, the number and location of uh, handicapped parking spaces, and none of these uh, in either the drawing appear to be a handicap accessible, van accessible uh, parking space. Well, if you look at the parking lot on the right hand side, it has eight spaces, and you see the dashed line. Those are two van ex van accessible spaces. <clears throat> Those. So there's only there and we only could and we could easily make these the two spaces on the other side closest to the building yeah. uh, ADA. We'll get into that when we do the site plan. Okay. Um, and just for the record, I'm I'm very skeptical of reducing the required number of space spaces. They're there for a reason. The voters in the community approve of it. Um, one and a half is totally reasonable. <laughs> Um, especially when you consider, uh, you mentioned the staff that might be uh, visiting, but also certainly relatives and other, other people that uh, may be offering PT services, whatever, whatever. Um, I don't see any reason we should reduce uh, the number of spaces from uh, the minimum that's required by the ordinance. So that would be 27 spaces, right? If, if, if they have 18 uh, rooms, yeah. Yep. But they knew that going in, yeah. No, I'm just, yeah, that's good now. Yeah. Um, is it possibly a trade-off between green space and parking or? Yeah, that would be a big, that would be a big trade-off. Um, then we'd have no space for residents outside. Yeah. But, you know, if you look at, um, we were granted a, uh, a variance on the building across the street where we have 70 units. And, um, you know, we we don't have people parking on the street. We are, are very self-contained. Um, we have two employees over there, and uh, and we have uh, parking for uh, the people that come in to do services. So Where's, I, um, where would uh, or would the roads be considered the emergency rights away? I'm sorry, Doug. What was your question? Uh, like if an ambulance had to get in here. Oh, I think uh, the the ambulance would go to the new entry. It would come right in and uh, probably, I say that, it may come directly across the street and come in uh, the existing entrance that's uh, across the street from the fire department. Well, have you, are you, uh, are you, are you guessing at that or have you guys discussed it or? We have not discussed it with the fire department. As you know, the fire department used this while they were building their existing building and um, renovating the existing building. They're very familiar with this. And uh, they're very familiar with our building across the street. We've worked very closely with them. And I, whatever we do, we will definitely have a, a plan with the fire department. I, I'm just looking at it. Uh, it's so easy for them to actually just walk across the street. and. Um, well, the ambulance well, service is down the road, actually. They're not in the fire station. That is true. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I'll ask the question, uh, anticipating Doug might have asked it. Where's the snow storage for the parking? <laughs> well, nobody's asked that question yet. Um, but I am assuming that we are going to have some of that green space was going to be where the retaining wall is, is going to take is going to take a fair amount of snow. Um, I, you know, it's interesting you say that. I think we're taking your snow right now from the city parking spaces uh, along the south side right now. I assume that, you know, we probably have to work that out so that uh, we're, we're using it. In some of our um, downtown locations and other communities, though, we have actually have to pay somebody to remove the snow. 
So uh, as far as the two concepts are concerned, Cynthia, um, this is Paul Amato. And I like the concept that's on the screen with the, uh, the addition built to the rear. Uh, I'm not disappointed that you're gonna take down the block addition um, that was put on some years ago. Um, I, I guess they didn't have to come before the board to, to make it match the existing building. Um, but I think it, it clearly leaves the, the main structure of the historic building more intact and has less of a impact. It, as far as parking is concerned, this is the oval. So yes, they, they do need to have parking, but there's plenty of parking around that um, they can fight for like everybody else on the oval fights for. Well, there's not plenty of parking, Paul. <laughs> well, be more people fighting for parking, yeah. <laughs> right. There's, there's no, there's nothing to say that the people going to visit somebody at the mill can't park on the oval, just like Correct. everybody else. Yep. yep. So it, it is a little different than um, some of the other uh, senior places that are more remote in town that um, have had to meet the parking requirement. What, what's the definition of it? The term was um, se se affordable senior housing. What is that? What does that mean? And is that a restriction that will be placed on the property in perpetuity? It will be. We'll, we will um, probably seek financing through New Hampshire Housing Finance Authority. Um, and they will require that uh, we have people that are. Uh, 80% of area median or less, and probably it will be 60, the average uh, income in here will be 60% of area median. But what about age? age hey, we'll excuse me for a second, just a quick note, please don't use the chat. Some people have been using the chat, please stop now. <laughs> okay, sorry, go ahead. Um, so, uh, we were talking about income. Uh, it it will be it will be income restricted. There will be uh, the rents are set annually, um, and so uh, these rents will probably be in the thousand dollars a month range. And, and what it's it says a senior of housing. What's the age restriction, and does that carry in perpetuity? Yes, it does carry in perpetuity. And I apologize, I didn't answer that question. It is 62 and above. All right, thank you. Hi, I've been real patient. I've had my hand raised, I'm jumping in now. I can't, I couldn't see any of that, Janet, I'm sorry. That's okay, everyone else was ignoring me, that's fine. <laughs> hey, Cynthia, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for this special meeting. Um, hey, quick question, I got two of them, first off, Currently, do you uh, allow parking or rent out parking in the parking lot that's behind the concrete structure? No, I don't rent it out. Um, I have some of our some of our uh, current uh, um, tenants across the street, residents across the street, use it from time to time because they uh, like to be able to see their car, and nobody's been using that, so we've allowed it. But they, uh, we have a small lot that's uh, on the west side of Bridge Street, opposite the mill. So they, we have plenty of parking. You'll okay, notice that's, that, that lot is not full at all. I haven't been down there recently with COVID, but I know in the past when I was out and about and down at Town Hall and that, um, and also dropping things off over at the mill that that lot was always very full. And I just wasn't sure because Certainly, if we're going to change this up, then there's some, you know, concern about where all those cars are going to go. Right. But more, right. more to the point. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, Jen. We have we do have tenants in the in this building. You know, they're using it for the chimney uh, fabrication of uh, chimney and suns. So sometimes they park their their employees are parking in here. Okay. Um, I think a more important point from my perspective is looking at the two scenarios, A and B, from a, an owner standpoint, from a, a living standpoint, which one do you think flows better for your residents? 
Well, I wanted a connection with, um, I like the entry on the north side so that I can have a, a community interaction between our two complexes. Um, and then so they can walk through a link and then go out to the green space that'll be on the sunny side of the building. This one is a little more, it's, this one doesn't flow as well to, uh, to work with our other building. Okay. Uh, and I'm glad you said that. I'm, I really want to get your input on that. Um, while I agree with you that losing some of the green space on the south side with scenario B is somewhat of a negative, um, I like Paul, I'll put in my two cents. I like this scenario better um, in part because of the parking. Um, it takes it from being right on Bridge Street and backing out um, to being a little bit more confined and I think a little bit safer. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your comments. Thank you. Oh, by the way, uh, I'll check my income when I project it to be, but boy, type four looks really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I have a technical question. Go ahead, Susan. Susan Robinson. So this could just be a a sort of design element that I'm not interpreting correctly and it's not that significant but in the second plan there seem to be um, doors to the exterior in the in the addition in the pale blue section whilst in the original plan there don't seem to be any am I reading it correctly or maybe not well uh, I, I don't know if I'll answer that question unless Jonathan wants to jump in here but if you look at we're going to maintain the main entrance on school street Mm -hmm. And there's a uh, handicapped ramp to access out there. I think we'll have to rebuild those stairs that, because they're too steep, but mm -hmm. we can do that and make a nice entrance. And then, um, and then there will be a new entry from the parking lot, as it's noted on the plan. And and we will develop this. This is uh, very conceptual. Right. You know, we will develop it so it's got a you know protected cover over the door and things like that. But you're referring to the entrance going into the original structure, not Correct. not in in the original plan that Jonathan spoke to us about. It doesn't seem to have any doors to the exterior in the addition, and I, I was just wondering if that was the intention. Um, are you looking at the plan that's on the screen now, Susan? So this is what I'm considering. Oh, is, I is, see. Oh, you're the looking at the elevation. This, this, yeah. this is the Sorry. first one. Yes. And, the, and this is what I'm calling the second one. And I'm just saying that in the design, and it could be that I'm clueless about architecture, which I am, um, but there appear to be no exterior doors in the addition. I was, I was just wondering if that was intentional or was that merely, it's just a little sketch and you're not really it's, finished. It's, real, it's not finished at all. And it's really okay. amassing to check the elevations and the height in the scale to compare to the school. Okay. We want to make sure that the school is the focal point. Yeah. Jonathan, do you want to add anything to that? I'm looking at the plans now. Maybe I should have done the beginning. Yeah, no, again, as, as Cynthia said, um, it's a very diagrammatic um, uh, floor plan. Yeah. It's showing where the stairwells might be and the elevator might be, essentially coming up with a massing study um, to deal with um, the historic where, where it's going to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't expect that these units will have direct doors to the outside. Their entrance to all of the um, units will be from common area inside the building. The only thing that would, there'll be two entrances, one the old in front of um, the cabinet building that we hope to maintain. And then another entrance, as Cynthia said, on the other side of the building that connects more across the street, across Bridge Street to the other to the other mill. Um, I so think I, she's confused, Jonathan, because there's no actual uh, door developed on the building in the elevations or in this uh, three-dimensional uh, sketch. We didn't take it to that, to that point. Um, uh, it, it, it was just, it's yet to come, right? It's yet to come, yes. Okay. Yeah. There's plenty of windows, though. That's the good thing. Could you go back to that last screen? Thank you. Um, I'm just going to reiterate the point that Paul started bringing up about the massing and that. I really do like the, the building towards the back of the cabinet building. 
Um, part of my concern is by putting the new addition onto the Bridge Street side, I'm afraid you're gonna, we're gonna have just too much height, too much weight right there on Bridge Street. It's such a narrow street anyways. Good fair statement. Yeah. Just and an I observation. Think, I, I agree with Janet. This this clearly it, it does infringe a little bit on the the sunny lawn, but not a lot. And um, it does make it does make the historic building stand out a little bit more and not be overshadowed by a um, another a newer building. And I'm also thinking about the neighbors across the street too, and their sense of openness and space around them. Um, when you put up, you know, a three-story building right there in front right. of them, I think that's a little bit tightening. I I agree, Janet, and I want to be respectful of my neighbors. So, in the in the new addition, whether it's in either location, how many floors and how many apartments per floor? So the new addition would have um, three apartments per floor, three stories high, total of nine, and there would be nine incorporated into the existing building. Three in the on each floor of the main cabinet building, the bigger brown building that you're viewing, an additional uh, two on the first floor on the right hand side to the entrance, mm -hmm. and one at a lower level total of 18. So nine in the new, nine in the, in the old. Okay. Did you ever think about um, underbuilding parking? We did yeah. until we, we, uh, we have so much ledge there. Pete, I, I was more concerned about um, the, the existing structure. If we were to go in there and start blasting, I think we would have a big problem with the, uh, with the brick building that's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did explore a concept with under parking and Cindy ran some numbers and quickly found that it was not feasible. Okay. Now, I, I, are you imagining a, a red brick facade to match? I am imagining a red brick facade. There may be some, depending on how we try to break down the massing and make it sort of in the background for the building, we may introduce uh, some sort of, you know, lap siding, like a clapboard or something, but I'm a big fan of brick. From a maintenance standpoint, it, it creates a better envelope for a bi building. I would just remind everybody that, you know, part of our goal of meeting with you tonight and getting your, your input and preferences is this has got to go through a complete review with Department of Historic Resources, um, and they will have um, clearly um, some input in terms of how they, uh, they're they going to deem this as an adverse effect to the historical character of the building. And um, my own experience with that office is that they typically would like whatever is added to something that is historic to not try to mimic the historic vernacular, if you will, of the building of that period, that it stand out on its own merits. Um, and it, it might be brick, it might be, um, as Cindy said, it might be a clabbered of some kind. Um, it, it's a puzzle for us to put together um, because we have, a, uh, we have a funding cap per unit for financing through New Hampshire Housing Finance Authority. Um, so we're gonna do the best that we can and we'll be back to the planning board with um, what comes out of that process. Cynthia, have you seen the, the memo from Chris Constantino of the Milford uh, Conservation Commission uh, dated January 18th? Uh, I have not. I apologize. Well, you don't have to apologize. I didn't know if you had it. It was um, Lincoln included it in the packet. Um, basically, they're asking about uh, stormwater management Erosion control, um, identification of soils, and they're asking about tree removal and hoping that uh, retaining as many trees as possible on the wetland side. I mean, you do you, you should. I, I suggest you get the letter, but 
that was the gist of what I was looking at. We'll definitely do that. And um, we've, you know, there's, uh, we were there today doing test bits. We will have the information that uh, you just referred to. Um, Jeff Cavan will be doing the stormwater uh, study. And we will, um, we've got some old trees that we were looking at today. They're in very, very tough shape. Um, I'm a big proponent of keeping as many trees as possible. I don't know, these are in very bad shape, but we will definitely make sure that we have some nice trees. There's some crab apples in the, that are shown on this plan in the green space where the, where the uh, it says patio and green space. Those are all trees that are shown on there that we want to keep. Um, uh, but to to try to keep uh, the majority of the trees would definitely be our goal. Mr. Chair, this is Lincoln. This is Lincoln Daly. On speaking to the historical character of the building, we do have members of our Heritage Commission as part of tonight's meeting. So, if they have questions later on, I'm sure they'll be involved in this overall process, and I'm sure the applicant will will, will appear before them uh, in some some shape or way or form for their input. Good. Can, can I just uh, clarify one thing? Please. Cynthia, you are going to maintain, I think I heard you correctly, you are going to maintain the ramp that's on the um, current original entrance way to the cabinet building. Well, I'm, let me say that I'll probably, uh, I don't know if I can restore that specific one, but I would rebuild one very much like the one that's there. The reason I'm asking is um, I know that the Sohegan Valley Rides Blue Bus does a lot of business over at the mill and mm -hmm. should um, residents here need to use that service, I don't foresee them being able to pull into one of the driveways or the parking areas. So that access there, that handicapped access there would be you know, very important. And I think that to your point, I think that if the, we had a truck parked right there on School Street today, right at the end of that um, ramp. I, I think it's very possible without causing uh, uh, any traffic issues to have somebody stop a bus there and uh, have convenient um, pedestrian access or wheelchair access coming out of the building via that ramp. One of the reasons I say that I, I don't know if I can keep that ramp is that the ADA requirements are very specific yep. and we will have to build to that. Correct. Yeah, we might want to take a look at the sidewalk there too, just for that reason as well. Uh, but I'm sure that'll be in the next iteration. I think we've got. To, I think we have to uh, resurface that part, that uh, walk completely, and um, and I think that there needs to be some sort of tip down as it drops into Middle Street. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. This is Lincoln Dale. Just kind of feed feed on Janet's comment. Is there, there could be an opportunity for maybe a slight pull in maybe in that area too? Um, I'm sorry. Even, what did you possible. refer to? What did you call it, Lincoln? A, a, basically a pull in for the blue bus, possibly to, to use part of that sidewalk area for a pull in maybe. I, I don't know, just explore options that provide easy access for residents who can, can go onto School Street maybe. Yeah, I think we'll have to take a look at that. I'm not sure because we have a retaining wall. Um, oh, good point. That, yeah, you're right. That drops down to that sidewalk. I I don't know that I that there's enough space. They can't hop down. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the active ones. <laughs> Is there an overall sense from um, at least the planning board uh, regarding the the parking, because if we were gonna stick with the, the reg, that's 27 spaces, which would significantly impact the green space and the overall feel, I, or I think it would impact the overall feel of the property. But um, Peter brought that up first thing, and that's, and he's right too, because it does, that's the reg. But I think we should at least give some sort of more clear guidance or thoughts on, you know, where we would go with that. And I don't mean a design, just as far as the board giving, if the applicant returns and they have the same number of parking spaces, are we going to 
possibly balk at that or we like how are we leaning here well uh, doug they need to go to the zba and get their density variance first because right now we're we're saying that there's 18 units and therefore it needs so many parking spaces um they need to negotiate with the zba for a variance which is tougher to get than a waiver from the planning board on parking so is this a good time that the zba may want to discuss that or well it's up to them that's true mr mm -hmm. chair if i just time in for a second regarding parking um this property falls in the over oval district as we all know and, and, and typically speaking in a commercial zone there's one as i said earlier 1.5 parking spaces are required for this type of use however uh the, the parking requirements are waived for properties in the oval district so i think as part of this there could be some common ground here or a middle ground to maximize parking on the property but knowing full but with, with the knowledge that Parking requirements are waived in, in the Oval District, so there that's a, there wouldn't need to be any kind of relief get granted to the applicant. However, since there's opportunity for on-site parking, the board, along with the applicant, should maximize uh, the spaces allowed. Or, yep. So, good. Um, Jason, did you did you want to talk about the the density at all, or? Yeah, uh, if you don't mind. Thank you, Chairman Not. Um, three things that I wanted to bring up. Uh, I know that the, the density was brought up. Um, the other two items that you may want to take a look at when you're putting together your application would be the setbacks. Yep. Um, and then the open space. So those, you know, density, setbacks, and open space. So those are the three that kind of jumped out at me when I was looking at uh, the information preliminarily. Um, and then also, I know that uh, Cynthia, you had brought up the height, you're going to be staying below the 40 feet height in, in height. So that that's good. You know, so at least that's one less thing that you have to come to us for. Um, but I just wanted before we, you know, ended this evening, I just wanted to at least make sure that we uh, didn't overlook those two other items, the setbacks and the open space. I think that thank you for bringing those up, because we definitely need your feedback on it. I don't think that I can develop this with less than 18 units. We started out looking at 24 to 30 and it, it became inf infinitely apparent to me that it was just too much on the site. I couldn't respect the old building, couldn't get the one per parking spaces that I needed. And so um, I think that this is an alternative going down to 18 that I think I can massage and make look nice on the site and have very usable green space and uh, and provide nice planting around the perimeter of here. So I I do need uh, the variance on the parking. And I think if we do the study um, across the street, you'll see that we just don't have people, not everybody has a car in uh, senior housing in a downtown area. So on the uh, on the number of parking spaces, I believe that would be with the planning board and not the zoning board. Okay, thank you. So that that's um, at least making sure you go into which board for you know which exceptions or variances. Um, but yeah, the parking I believe is with the planning board, but those other three that I I mentioned are with us, the zoning board. Thank you, Jason. So. That leaves us with um, the density and uh, the, the allowable density is, you know, wouldn't, I couldn't even develop the building at all. So. Right, you'd only be at like three units, <laughs> right? Yeah, right. 2.5. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. All right, very yeah. hard. Um, so I, I, that's, you know, if, if we can't get there, um, then the, uh, it's an, it will be a non-starter, but better to know now than later. Right, right. And, and again, I mean, we're not voting on anything tonight. Uh, this is just, you know, us being introduced to the project and giving you what our initial thoughts are. I mean, I don't want you to think that our minds won't change or anything like that, but at least we're giving you our initial thoughts. And, you know, I think that, you know, when we're talking density, it also gets into, it. it is somewhat related to the open space as well. I know that you're trying to provide that open space and that green space along Middle Street, at least in this um, rendering that Lincoln has up on the screen right now. Um, I think that that's good in that area, especially 
where it, it's just, it seems like it's a sea of asphalt in that area. You know, you don't want to just continue it or think people can encroach onto more paved area. You, you want to be able to have that green space, that separation. I like that idea. I, I for one, like that idea. I can't speak for everybody else on the board, but um, I, I like that separation that you're providing there. Michael, I see that you've, you've had your hand up. Um, I want to make sure that I'm not the only one speaking from the zoning board this evening. Oh, no, no, it's no problem. I, I, I just want to reiterate in a different way some things, uh, especially that Mr. Basselier brought up. Uh, he had mentioned- I like Pete. Pete's a good guy. He is. He has got some good ideas. He said something about uh, two-level parking and underbuilding. I hadn't thought about becoming troglodyte in parking because the submarine vans are hard to maintain. But I had thought there are uh, a different ways of raising parking to two levels or in some garages even, there are lifts that give additional parking and just coming up with wild ideas, but I, I do have some questions. Uh, parking was one, I didn't know exactly who would deal with it. Thank you, Mr. Chair, that we can slide it off to that other board. <laughs> um, the maximum height was, uh, target was 40 feet. That blue building, I did not see any dimensional numbers of an approximate height. Uh, I, I do question that. I do question, because I don't see a legend. What is the difference between, I'm, I'm like Janet, I might be a candidate. I'm, I meet the age requirements and could be poor enough. Um, what is the difference between a type one, type two, type three, and type four? Uh, I see the different sizes, but I don't know the difference in types, please. They're, they're all one, um, one bedroom apartments. Some of them are handicapped accessible, um, some are not. Um, in, in terms of, we just classified them based on square footage for the time okay. being, just laying them out. Um, Okay, so the, a type one is the 600 and uh, 15 square, square foot, foot, and the type four is the 672. Is that, that the difference in type? Area and how they're ultimately um, made accessible for the handicap. Yes. Okay, thank you. And then uh, to quote <laughs> P.T. Barnum, this way to the egress. I, I know that you had said earlier that you had not laid out exact entryways and everything. I, I do know that with 18 people and with a, a semi-commercial type building, I know it's residential, but it's, it has to meet a different standard than a home. Uh, that door openings in widths and everything and uh, the way the doors open. And because this is going to be handicap accessible, uh, again, there, there has to be uh, fewer stairs or no, no stairs and at least one. And Janet, I believe, addressed that with the existing ramp in front of the school building. That's uh, that's the majority. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's the majority of my comments. Thank you, Michael. Was there anybody else from the zoning board that wanted to ask questions or make a comment? I, I have a question. Yes, Rob. Um, this is for Cynthia. Um, Cynthia was saying the, uh, the housing across the street has uh, elderly folks also, and um, there's enough parking for them. Uh, I was wondering if she could give us, uh, collect the information of how many units there are and how many cars there are uh, being used by those units now. I can definitely do that, Rob. I will do that. Yep. I'm sorry, okay. I don't have that tonight. Yep. And the other question I have is just about the parking. 
uh, on Middle Street, the uh, parking shown there. Now there, there already is parking there, right? Are these, are these parking spaces those, those spaces or are these not the towns and these are yours? Well, those are definitely the towns. It has nothing to do, us, do with us, but what we were doing was we were examining the idea of doing diagonal parking. So that you might make Middle Street one way and do diagonal parking on both sides to get right. 18 plus another 18. But we, we need two sidewalks, I think, if we do that. So, I, but I think it's worth exploring. Right, but so, so your, your new housing is going to take up some of the Middle Street parking lots that exist for the town. No, no not at all, not no. at all, no. Oh. We Lincoln, were, Lincoln, yeah. if you go back to the other scheme, you, I think the other scheme shows the existing parking the way it is today. Sure. And, it, and that is that is on town land. That is, okay. That is not, so, on, we're not touching so it. The 18 are, are off of Bridge Street and, and perpendicular to Bridge Street? Currently they are perpendicular, like this shows. And we, oh. we thought you could get more if you did diagonal parking and you could do it on both sides. Okay, so all the parking that you're proposing is on your property. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, no, okay. we're not. We, okay. That was a study that came out of my uh, participation in the, in the parking committee in the town of Milford, not, not this development. Sorry. Okay. We're going to, we only want to um, use our property for our parking. Okay. Thank you. That's all the questions. Thank you, tangential, uh, tangential to uh, the ongoing discussion, it's, it's worth noting that uh, the town will be working with VHP over the summertime um, on a uh, oval improvements project and Middle Street will be part of that overall examination. So I think to, to expand upon Cynthia's comment, uh, is an opportunity to work with Cynthia uh, to imp along Middle Street to improve parking for all to benefit and one Good. looking at how Middle Street's actually utilized. Thank you. Uh, Thank Lincoln, you. Mr. Chairman, Doug? Yes. Yeah, this is Pete. I need to drop off for a Conservation Commission meeting. So um, um, I want just want to let you know that I'm dropping off. Um, I'm, I'm in favor of the concept. Um, I like the idea of over 62, housing for over 62. I have serious reservations and concerns about uh, the amount of parking for the numbers of uh, yeah. residents that will be present. Um, but I look forward to uh, working with you to see what we can do to make this happen. Thank you for your Thanks, help. Pete. Have a good evening. You're welcome. Good night now. Hey, Pete. Lincoln, could I ask a question? Uh, Jason brought up um, setbacks and open space. Isn't that um, exempt within the uh, Oval District for this lot? No, if you look at section 5.05.7 of the zoning ordinance, it says that yeah. the uh, multifamily residences within the Oval Sub-District are not exempt from the open space and yard requirements. So just, just take a look at that. And um, so Chairman Wood is yes. the, the addition proposed would be within the setbacks on the property, but the existing building is non-compliant. <laughs> Would we have to get a variance for the existing building because it's a change of use? Because the front of that on School Street sits over the 30 foot, I believe it's 30 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, it always yeah. has. I don't, John, I don't John, think you'd need a variance. I don't think you'd need a variance for an existing non conforming situation. I would concur with that, uh, Jeff. Is um, that that would be my ruling also as zoning administrator? I would definitely. The existing structure is not conforming. It only really applies to the new structure, the addition being placed on the property. Right, and where this is a corner lot, just make sure you're looking at those rear setbacks as well. That has to be 30 feet. Mr. So not just here. That was one of my other concerns. Yeah. Uh, they had they had acknowledged a need for uh, thirty percent of green area, but they they didn't say exactly or nearly an estimate how much percentage of green area their plan would show. I would appreciate that, and this would be this make this part of the oval a gray ghetto. 
uh, is there, I, I know that heretofore in the Oval area, the merchants at least have expressed concern about parking. And I don't want the Oval to encroach upon your parking places, but I don't want the other pressure to exist either. So I guess, you know, Mike, where, where it kind of comes into play, like there's a little bit of a balance, right? I mean, if we're looking exactly. at the, you know, the open space criteria versus parking, you know, I mean, there's a balancing act there, right? It's well, what's, that's, that's and, why I mentioned, like Pete, Pete was saying, go down with parking. And I'm asking about the possibility in the future, if there's a need that could be a possibility. Almost it, like banked parking spaces that could be developed in the future or something like right, that. Right. Okay. Well, so, I, um, Lincoln brought up that there was uh, in this oval district, those parking mm -hmm. uh, requirements are waived. So right. we That's can't correct. enforce any of that. Right. So I, I guess, you know, number one, the parking, if it was going to be voted on, it would be by the planning board. Number two is, I think that if I was voting on the parking, which I am not, <laughs> I would make sure that the there would be some information that would be submitted to the town that would justify what the demand is versus right. what's being provided. Perfect. And we always ask for that. Yep. When we've had when we've had multifamily homes or multifamily developments where they wanted an adjustment on the parking requirements. Just go to Pine Valley. I believe there was one there. Yep. Exactly, exactly. You know, whether it's from a similar type of a use or it's from some other kind of a national source like ITE, parking generation manual, whatever information can be provided to the town to help make an informed decision is what's really important to be provided by the applicant. And I think, I think, you're, missing, I think you're missing the elephant in the room. If you don't give them the variance for density, who cares about the parking? Right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Um, let's, yeah. let's move past parking here. And and if you have any questions about the density, and and if the ZBA has any opinions as to which style they like better, then that's fine. Karen, Tracy, do you have any comments, questions? Not right now, no. Tracy? Nope, not at the moment. All right, Rob, Mike, do we have any comments or questions regarding density? No, I, I, that's why I'm looking for uh, the information about what they have in the place across the street. Um, I did have a question on density. It would be 2.6 units. I understand that's not economically feasible. It's three times, it's six times the density. Uh, I understand economic feasibility in going forward, but um, I, since I don't know, I'm asking the rest of the ZBA their, their sense of feeling of scope. I mean, six times the density is, is quite a jump. Yeah. And I understand that Cynthia was talking uh, from an economical viewpoint, uh, 30 units would be uh, much more desirable from that point of view. I'll shut up now. So my feeling is that although um, there are separate items, that being density, setbacks, open space, and also parking, they're all related. So that's why I think that um, even though that we are not necessarily directly talking about density and we're talking about parking, the parking has to do with the density. The open space has to do with the density. The setbacks has to do with the density. So all of these are somewhat related so that if the density decreases, then maybe there's more open space. Maybe we don't need as many parking spaces. Maybe we can meet the setbacks. So. It's not just, I don't want to look at this in a bubble. 
right? I mean, we want to look at it from a big picture of the whole project. So um, although that density is the hot topic, um, it's related to all the other aspects that we've been discussing this evening. So any other comments or any kind of advice or recommendations or requests of the applicant so that we can at least help the applicant um, make some decisions and provide us with information that may be able to help us make a better decision? Get, get all, all non-binding uh, comments, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. So Jason, I think if I understood you correctly, <clears throat> I, I think this density here is much less than we have across the street with our 70 units. I think that we only provide two thirds of the number of parking spaces per unit over there. And we think that that is, is, um, is perfect for the population that we have across the street. And we tried to improve on that by going to a one per unit. And we felt like that in our business, as a business decision is um, adequate um, for 18 minutes. So I can certainly come back to you with, um, with, this, with other studies. And, um, and I think that, uh, I, I hope that you can see your way clear to approve this because I don't, I don't think it has any feasibility if we go down less than 18. And I think that if we, if we try to put more parking on this lot, mm -hmm. um, we probably could do that, but I think that you know our neighbors would suffer for it. So I hope by no means that you're thinking that I'm looking at this project in a negative way. I, I, I'm just Thank looking you. for you to be able to provide us with support so that we can make the right decision, whatever that may be. <laughs> All right. I'm happy to do that. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate right. you saying that. All right. Thank you. Michael. Yes, Michael. Uh, thank you. I, I do have a question to share with Cynthia and all, I, I thank you. I think the idea is, the idea is great. Uh, I understand the new complex would have, because of three floors, would have an elevator. I'm assuming that the, the older building would not be serviced by the same elevator. Therefore, you would only put the younger Hale and Hardy types on the second floor and they would never get older. No, we would. They would all be serviced by an elevator. We might have to okay. have a half. We might have to have a half level stop or something. But they will all be serviced by an elevator. So the elevator would have a left or a front and a rear entrance exit to cover the older building. The elder think, building. Yeah, I think our plan would be that we would line up the second floor with the second floor or the third floor with the second floor of the existing building or something like that, so that we might have a half level difference. Thank you very much but we will make it serviceable. And Cynthia, while you're, um, when, when you do eventually start filling out the application and you're looking at the different, I guess, um, special exceptions, variances that you're looking at, one of the hardest things that we have on the zoning board and you know whether it's the applicant or it's the zoning board trying to figure things out, it's with that fifth criteria for variances, that's the hardship. Right. So, so pay, particular attention on how you want to answer that and you know just to make sure that you are providing a solid case for yourself for what you're looking for okay mr chair uh, yes, one Michael. of the questions we struggle with on that hardship is does it go only to that particular property and that's what we've wrestled with in the past mm. You know, what's unique about this property? That, that's the thought process that you should have while you're filling it out and when you're putting your presentation together for the zoning board, that is. Thank you. One of the thoughts that I've had in that regard is that you, I've got this beautiful historic building that if you could just pick it up and move it on the site, you might be able to you know, accommodate, right. not the number of units, not the density, I can't do that and develop that building the way it needs to be developed in a nice manner. Um, but I think that um, there is some inflexibility because of the location of the historic building. Thank you. Thank, uh, you, thank you. Any other members of the zoning board before we turn it back over to Chairman Knott? All right, seeing none.
Chairman Knott, thank you very much. Thank you. Doug, I have one question for Lincoln. Please. If, if Cynthia wanted to um, use this building in a commercial use, she would not need any parking, is that correct? Uh, that would be correct. Although technically yes, but I'm sure the planning board would encourage uh, parking to be placed in the plot on the property if there's available space. Again, is the parking requirements are minimal minimal standards. The planning board has the authority to uh, encourage or require uh, parking to be placed on the property should it be should it be relevant or needed. So in right right now, Cynthia and I are the only two oval property owners that do provide private parking. Uh, no. the pro now there are there are additional ones too. So <laughs> there are examples around around the oval that actually also have off street parking. Yeah. I think the, the one of the issues for me was that it's there's very few commercial things that I could do here. Um, it would need more parking than I can provide for housing. So this works for housing for seniors, um, doing one per, and um, and I think this is why it led me to the highest and best use um, for this property. Janet, you had your hand up. Yeah, I got a couple of things. Hey, Lincoln and Jason, when you're gathering information or helping Cynthia gather information. Let's not just look at the mill and Lindsay Landing. You got Granite Square down the street too. So relative to density and um, parking requirements, that might be a good uh, neighborhood perspective. Number two, uh, Doug, just to go back to the um, Conservation Commission memo that you mentioned, the one dated January 18th, yeah, I believe that that is about the Route 13 property and not this site. That is correct. Yeah, that's correct. So, yeah. so either we need to either have that notice in the minutes, or that whole section needs to be struck from the minutes. Either one, whichever is most appropriate. Um, and let's Mike, strike it because yeah, now I see that now. You're correct. Yeah, when you said wetland, well, I, I couldn't find it in the pack. And then when you said wetlands, I'm like, well, I won't s tell you what I was thinking. Um, and the third thing was, oh, the items that are in the chat, Lincoln, will we be including that, please, as an addendum to the minutes, just to make sure it's codified since they were um, written out? Uh, we're um, required to, so yes. Okay, thank you. That's it. And to respond to Janet's first point about uh, other examples around the community, yes, we'll definitely work with the applicant to make sure that uh, there are comparable examples that they can include as part of their presentation and applications. Well, I think Granite Square wasn't mentioned tonight, and I think that's the most important one because it is in the neighborhood. Great. Yep, I agree. Thank you, Janet. Any other thoughts, comments from the planning board? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, this is Lincoln Daly again. Um, uh, maybe I want to open it up to other people who are attending uh, this, this meeting tonight. Yeah, uh, I just didn't get to that yet. Lincoln. Oops, sorry about that. My apologies. I was waiting for answer from the planning board first. No, I'm good. All right, there's... Look, it does look like there's other people in attendance. Um, please, uh, if you'd like to speak, please state your name and make your remarks. Lincoln, does anybody have their hand up inside? I don't see it. No. I don't believe so, Mr. Chair. All right, so. Yeah, I'm verifying that myself in here. So um, are there any further, anything? Applicant, Cynthia, do you have anything else to say? You good? Any questions? No, um, you know, as a technical matter though, there was some, someone brought up the fact that we needed a 30 foot setback or, or a front yard setback from Middle Street. Um, that parking was, uh, is that considered street or is that considered a parking lot? Because we, you know, we, 
I, we considered that as a sideline because it didn't really front on the street. I, I would agree with that, um, Cynthia. It's not, okay. it, that's not part of the actual right, uh, right of way of Middle Street. That's an okay. answer, it's an ancillary lot. Yeah, it, correct. Thank you. <clears throat> I that think it? I appreciate everybody's time tonight. Thank you so much. This has been very helpful. We'll come back with some, with some answers. And, Thanks uh, for coming and, in. So and design. I got to put my plug in, my usual plug. Lots of granite, lots of granite. <laughs> yep. I found a lot today. It's only yeah. two feet below the grade. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have a lot of granite in the bottom, uh, in the basement of the old bank building that they built right on the rock. Yes. It's yep. a great substrate. Thank you. Yep. All right, good. We can move to other business if there's any. And we can say good night. Thank you. Good night. Yes, thank you, Cynthia. Glad to the team. Thank you so much. Well, Chairman Nott, thank you very much for inviting the zoning board. And uh, we'll let you do your, your business. Thank you, Chairman Ford. <laughs> Have a great night, Bye, everybody. Jason. Good evening. Thank, thank you. Bye, ZB members. Is there any, uh, Jason, is there any uh, other business you need to bring up? There is not, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Lincoln? I had nothing, Mr. Chair. Okay. Anybody else on the planning board have anything they want to well, mention? Doug, I just wanted you to know that on Tuesday night, I rushed to my computer and sat down and opened up the Zoom meeting. And <laughs> they're waiting and waiting and waiting. And came over and goes, you know, right on the screen, it says it's on Thursday night, not Tuesday night. <laughs> Well, you probably felt happy and foolish at the same time. <laughs> Anybody else have any other business? We don't, uh, our next meeting is, it's not on the sheet here, but that would be 16th. Yeah. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. So. Something's happening on the 16th. Mm. Yeah, Link, uh, any preview of anything going on in that meeting? There'll be the continuation of the um, the St. Mary's uh, application for the site right. plan. Just it's more of a um, uh, just to confirm what the board requested during that last meeting uh, and kind of finalization of that plan. There is a, um, a condominium a conversion of the nine units on Panema Hill Road, and I think that's it. Good. What about the guy on on um, Molendi Clark or... Street? That's yeah. Continue. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, Jason. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, that's going to be continued until the April meeting. Okay. I requested a continuance. Could I ask for a clarification from the rest of the planning board members? Did you hear a phrase used um, by Mr. Thornton regarding downtown sub? Thing about a grace something yes okay so i did not miss mishear that you said that yeah thank you do you do you know what he meant tim gray ghetto that great yeah ghetto. yeah, I, now, right. yeah I, I thought i heard that too yes <laughs> yeah. so, so janet i heard the ghetto comment and it, yeah. just, and it upset me tremendously I don't, I, I don't think we should get into this i just wanted to validate that i heard mr thornton say that yeah. I found it quite, I was, I made me wonder what, and he actually, I was like, what the hell is that? But <laughs> carried on the thought afterwards too. I forget what he was saying, but he carried on the thought about, you know, what that yeah. is. I just, I just was, I was a little bit concerned about that. I wasn't Thank sure you. that I heard the exact words and I was thinking we would, at some point, somebody would bring it up again. So I'm glad you did, Janet. And I'm actually, doubly surprised when I hear the exact qualifier that yep. anyway thank you thank you Mr. Chair all right hey uh Jason normally I was having um Tim and uh I can't remember her name anymore Kelly Kelly Tim Kelly and I would have uh kind of uh just a little brainstorming and updating phone calls so that I that's something I'd like to uh we only did it a couple of times. I was I wanted to do it more often. So uh, maybe we should talk offline about that, arrange those. It was just a good 
give us an idea of what's going on because we're not in town hall every day. Okay, that's we can we can make that happen. All right, so uh, I'm really new, so I'm I'm open to pretty much anything. Yeah, no, that's cool. Well, and one of the most important things is my cheat sheet. So um, we'll talk about that. But anyway, hey everyone, thanks for being here. If no one has anything else, we'll have a uh, have a good evening. Thanks. You Bye -bye. too. Thank you. Thank you. Night night. Bye all.